This episode was made possible through the continuing support of the great and wonderful Michael Loftus. Thank you. Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop. Today I have something completely different from what you're used to seeing because I, I had an idea and I wanted to see if I could do it. I looked online, some other people have kind of done this, but not, I think I could do it better really is what it boils down to. So we're gonna take a stab at it. I haven't built this at all yet, and in the next couple minutes, we're gonna build two completely different ones because this is very much experimental. What I wanna do is record the sounds of a human body through a stethoscope. Turns out that's really easy to do. You can just buy a stethoscope microphone for like more than my car, which is dumb. So I'm like, all right, how can we do this? So all a stethoscope is, is either a tympanic membrane, a drum for the adult sized one, or just a little cup with a hole. If you have a stethoscope like this and it only works on one side, the reason why is you have to flip this around. If you look on your little, if you look here on this part, this one has a green dot, which tells you we're on the smaller one. This is the pediatric cuff. So this thing will flip. It'll rotate separately, but it only works on one at a time. On nicer brands of stethoscopes, this will have a flat spot, and it'll be curved all the way around like a diode. So that's how you know. So right off the hop, we can get rid of this. Now here's where I bring genius to bear on this. Okay. So the barbed fitting on a stethoscope happens to be, on this particular brand, and I'm, I gotta think this is pretty common, happens to be a quarter inch barbed fitting. Now the, the ID is smaller than on what you'll find at Home Depot. Like uh, this is just one of the standard ever built hose barb splicers, but the OD is the same. And you can test this because if I take my hose barb, it'll fit right into my th stethoscope tube, no problem. And it fits well, I, could, I get a good seal. So, because of that, we can grab a piece of quarter inch ID tubing. Now here's the thing, ID OD depends on if it's pipe or tubing or conduit or hose, like there's a million different things. So the guys, that, and this is an ever built thing again, um, let's zoom in and give you a real look at that. So this is a little short 10 foot length of clear vinyl tubing. You can get these at big box stores. I, I went to Home Depot for this. And you can see that they label it 3 8 inch OD. OD means outside diameter and quarter inch ID, inside diameter. Well, we know that our hose barbs fit quarter inch inside diameter and we know those fit the thing. So this should fit in, oh my God, we did science, look at that. It fits, right? So now we can adapt our pickup. This is basically a microphone. This is a mechanical pickup, right? So what we have here is either a funnel with a pipe that goes out through here, or we have a drum. This is a plastic drum head that is compressing the air inside here and sending it down the tube. And if the green dot is up, it's whatever one you see on that side, right? So now we have the sound into the pipe. Now, the next step is, how do we get the sound from the pipe to the microphone? First thing, we're dealing with really tiny amounts of mechanical energy. So we want this to be as short as we can get it. There's, we've got a long cable on the microphone, so we can make up our link there. So how do you adapt this to the microphone? Well, I'm gonna do this with two completely different sized microphones so that I can show you my ridiculously clever system. So this is our first microphone. It's a little Shure 93 lav mic. Now the actual element is in there. This is an electric condenser microphone, so it's wicked sensitive and we need to adapt from our quarter inch up to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off a piece of tubing. So this is tubing that is quarter inch ID, 3 8 OD, right? We saw that right here, 3 8 OD. 
And this is where the OD comes to play. So my next, and they sell all these side by side by side on the shelf. The next one is half inch OD, three eighths ID. So if my three eighths OD tubing gets with my three eighths ID tubing, when a mommy tube and a daddy tube really love each other, boop, and it's a nice, decent seal. It's a good mechanical bond and it's a good acoustic seal. So I can have this on the end like that. I can push that up into there and that's as far as it'll let me push it. So then I can take this. Now I got to see at what point does our thing fit. So let's just cut off a bit of this tubing and I'm going to cut it a little long because it's always easy to cut a little off. And I got 10 feet of this stuff. I only need a few inches. So we're going to be fine. Now will this fit in there? That'll fit in there and that'll fit in there really well. Will it fit down a size? Yes, but this will fit in the quarter inch tubing, but I got to squeeze it to get it in there. And if I seal that tight against there, it's not going to work at all. Now the good side is if that works, it'd work really well, but I don't think it's going to, I don't think that'll be okay. So we're going to go up a size tubing. I'm just going to run this right the way down. As far as she'll go. Okay. And then how much do I need? I only need, I only need a couple of, like I need, I'm going to say to there and we'll cut this off here. Okay. Now to make this work, I'm going to stick this up in here and I want to come back down. Can I? Oh, I don't. Yes, I can. Ha ha. All right. I got an idea. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a plug kind of. I cut off a little piece of that. That's our quarter inch tube. And I'm going to grab a razor knife. I wish I had a razor knife. I got an exacto blade. That'll work. All right. So right here, we're going to cut this down its length because I don't want to force that microphone through it. And now I'm just going to wrap, I'm, I'm going to easily slide the microphone through now that it's open like that. And now I got my little tube and I can stick this easily in there. I can put this tube in behind it and that locks my microphone in place in it. It's got its own little air chamber in there now. And then I can seal the back of this with epoxy, which will take no effort at all. I'll just grab some five minute epoxy, mix it up and seal that together. So that's, that's our first microphone. And yeah, so I'm going to unplug this. So that is now my first microphone. This will plug right into my audio rig. And once this is sealed up, that should work fine. We'll test it in a minute. So second microphone. This is a way old. I don't even know who made it. I don't see a name on it anywhere. This is really old. This is just a junk microphone I had laying around in a drawer. This microphone is a dynamic microphone. The thing that I like about this is it'll work with anything. It doesn't need phantom power. And the pickup is on the end. This doesn't pick up on the side. It picks up on the end. So. This is going to take a little bit of a different approach. So here's how we're going to do it. We have to start with the quarter inch because that's what our thing fits. And it's easy to swap that from one head to the other. So I'm going to cut off a chunk of that because everything begins at quarter inch tubing and that's, that's our size down here. So we know that works, right? So I'm just going to, stick that in there as our happy placeholder, but we got to get, we got to get bigger. So let's come up a step with our three eighths tubing. Okay. That'll let me go about an inch in. So I'm going to come back to there to here 
Yes. Okay. We'll cut that off there. And then we'll cut off a little bit of this. And this is our half 3 8 so It's half OD, 3 8 ID. And we'll just come up a step and just ram that in there as far and tight as I can get it, which gets me all of about an inch. And then I'm going to cut that off just completely. Okay, so this is what I've got now. That's my adapter. Set this aside. Next step, we're going We've got 5 eighths to 1 half because we know we're at half OD and we want to get that bigger. So we're going to ram this in as far as we can. Ta-da! And now we see, can this fit? Almost. So I'm going to cut this off down to there. So, and I don't have to go up the last step because I can go up the next size, but the next size, this just slides into the pipe. Okay, and this is three quarter, five eighths. So we'll set all of our tube aside. Now, how do I entice this to go in there? This is where we jump off into, you probably can't just do this at home. Unless you're a super nerd with fun things like this, because I am breaking out my Upinor Propex tool. Well, that might even be the right size. Yeah, I think that'll do. All right, let's let's try this out and see. Because while this is an Upinor tool designed for PEX, I have used this for all kinds of other tubing and it works great. So let's just give this a little kiss with a fist and stretch her right out. Now I want to be, oh, I might be able to fit the whole damn thing in there. That'd be super cool. Now, if this won't do it as big as I want, I can always, yeah, I'm going up to the three quarter. It's designed for legit packs. This is not legit packs, though you could absolutely do this with packs which would be pretty funny. I don't think the pex sizes nest as cleanly though. Okay, we got that. We'll slip this right up in there. Boom. <laughs> it worked. I love it when it works. Okay, and this is just shrinking right back down and that's giving me a beautiful seal on there. So this is more airtight than this is. And this is already like, I, I would expect that to be reasonably tight. So we take out our little holder and we can swap this easily from one to the other. And this is just what I can throw together in just like a couple minutes. Imagine what I could do if I really put some time into this. So that is now our interface and we're there so the next step is to test it let's see if we can get sound out of it so i'm plugging this into here i've got my little tascam recorder which will power up right here and i'm recording this on a tascam dr60 delta Oh yeah, I, I have sound. All right, let's record it so you can hear it. Audio check, one, two, three. So this is a sound through my normal microphone and this is a sound through the stethoscope. So if I turn this around, right now you're listening to me through the tympanic membrane. If I flip this around though, now you're listening to me through the pediatric cuff and you can see this is actually recording sound. So the question is, can we hear a heartbeat with it? All right, let's see if this works.
Well, the audio quality is not exactly fantastic, but it does work. It totally works. It's really quiet, but I have a very small heart. Also, we're recording that through a dynamic microphone, and there's a lot of handling noise. So it works, but it will need some refinement. But clearly it works, so that's super cool. Let's try the other one where we go to a condenser microphone. It works. It totally works. You want to try it? You want to hear your heartbeat? Sure. Yeah. Through stereo headphones. Now, I haven't tested this one yet, and this one might not work at all because I haven't done the epoxy thing. I got to epoxy this. But let's see what we get. So we're on there. Phantom power. Yes, I'm. Whoa. Wow. That is way sensitive. Let's turn that. Yeah, this <laughs> one's going to work way better. Hi there guys, I'm Chris from the future, here giving you cute, cute puppy dogs, because I may be a complete and total idiot who forgot to hit record on the Tascam when testing the second microphone. Yeah, that happened. It's so loud I'm able to peek it, but I'm, I'm getting so much handling noise. Right. That's why, that's why. I'm getting the room noise. I'm getting... S yeah, I'm getting so much room noise. I gotta isolate that. It's not, it's not gonna work. Bummer. It's, it's well, I'm on the right path. I just there's so much room noise coming in through here because it's so sensitive mm. that I can hear it if you tap this. But I need to soundproof need off to of here. I gotta get yeah. rid of that. And so I just gotta put some epoxy in here. But it works. I just need to, I need to do some stuff to refine the design. Okay. The dynamic microphone one also works this one mm -hmm. but it's really quiet okay. because it's a dynamic microphone and it's probably from the 80s but but the sure one totally works and yeah we did it we did it i proved it it, it works i made a thing so yeah now you know how to do it that's my novel approach at how to adapt from stethoscope tubing up to various microphones and you can go all the way up to tubing at like what did I end up at three quarter? Three yeah, quarter. you can go, you can go all the way up to three quarter. And at three quarter, I could with a PEX expander, I could stuff a, can a big studio shotgun mic in one of these. Yeah, that's a big difference. The reason, and, well, you have to watch the video and figure it out. But I'll give you a hint: if you're careful with shopping for tubing, you match the OD and the ID, for, and you just step I up. Saw, and and I it's saw you do some it's so clever. I'm like a genius. Here, I'm so proud of myself. I'm just gonna be proud of myself for like the next five minutes because after tomorrow I gotta make another video and I get to be an idiot all over again. So thank you for hanging out. Try this out, make something cool. By the way, the stethoscope heads, you can buy cheap stethoscopes for like, I think I paid 20 bucks for this. And everything else was, except for the tubing was just crap I had laying around. So hit up garage sales for old microphones. You want lavalier microphones because they have little tiny ones, but this is widely adaptable. And you can get the tube at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, any big box store sells it. So yeah, you guys have fun. Make cool stuff, put it on the internet. I'm Chris Bowden. As always, we'll see you next time.